A vervet monkey sounds the alarm. Whatever it was seems to have gone. The mothers decide it's safe to return to their meal. By dusk, the cubs have had their fill. Now, all they want is sleep. But tonight, there will be no rest. It's one of the Nomad Brothers. He charges again. But Matimba and Kanya risk their lives to protect the cubs. Every second they stall him buys time for the cubs to get away. The mothers hold their own against him. But now, his brother arrives. He moves in on the giraffe kill. And that stops the attack. The mothers have no chance against two males. But the nomad's attention has shifted. They'll settle for the giraffe kill. The cubs can wait. Now, the two mothers have only one goal. Find their cubs. Their soft calls tell their cubs it's safe to come out. The family is reunited. They will leave the nomads to their stolen meal and quietly slip away. By August, the dry winter transforms the bush. The grass dies back. Trees lose their leaves. Winter opens up the landscape. It's an excellent time for young lions to have a hunting lesson. The hunter must be patient, quiet, focused. In these conditions, a tawny colored lion blends beautifully into the bush. Not so a white lion. The kudu spots her and escapes.
lesson over. But will these big white cubs begin to impact the pride's ability to hunt? It's now November. New clouds usher in the wet season. The bush bursts back to life. The cubs are growing larger and stronger by the day. The white cubs more visible than ever. By December, the white cubs are 18 months old, the males 20 months. They're real lions now, and their play looks more like real hunting. The pride has another giraffe kill and their meal is attracting attention. For the next month, the hyenas are never far away, shadowing the pride, waiting for them to bring down prey. But today, something's not right. The hyenas have suddenly disappeared. Dawn finds the family shaken by another attack by the nomads. They gather in close for comfort and to reaffirm their bonds. The mothers and white cubs are unharmed, but only one tawny male cub is participating. The other isn't responding. He lies quietly, a deep puncture wound on his side. His mother, Kanya, knows something is wrong. So too does his brother. He only moves deeper into the bush. The instinct of a wounded animal to hide. His brother turns to their mother and invites her to play. But for the first time, Kanya refuses. An hour later, the poor cub can no longer sit up. His condition is worsening.
His brother encourages him, tries to get him up. The cub is struggling. His mother is there, but there's nothing she can do. Still, his brother tries again. Ten minutes later, the poor cub has a painful seizure. And then, he's gone. His family holds back, unsure. And then Matimba and Kanya approach. In some quiet way, they understand this tragedy to their family. One of his white sisters says goodbye. And finally, his brother, his closest companion. Kanya's cub was 20 months old when he died. Losing him is a profound blow. The cub's death comes at the onset of summer rains, and a new cycle of life taking hold across Kruger. It's time for the courtship dance of quite a performer, the red-crested Korhan. It's been two months since Kanya lost her cub. But life goes on, and she still has one of her own and her sister's white cubs to care for. Every day presents new challenges to the white pride. 
After a failed hunt earlier in the day, the White Sisters are hungry and pestering their mother to hunt again. Then something catches their eye. Vultures. They've spotted a leopard with a fresh kill. A tall tree is the best place to keep it safe. The young lions have learned that where there are vultures, there's often an easy meal to steal. If they can scare off the owner. The cubs spent their youth climbing trees. Now, they have their reward. The white cub is not as graceful as a leopard, but she still gets what she wants. Now it's Kanya's turn. But it's not so simple for a full-grown adult. She can't climb like the cubs, but she can leap. After all that, her reward is one very thin leg. It's the tawny young male's turn. He now weighs as much as Kanya. Only great strength will get him up this tree. He is as nimble as a leopard and gets a choice cut of the meal. and provides a nice morsel for his mother. This tree climbing skill will serve him well. He won't have Matimba or Kanya to hunt for him when he leaves the pride. Stealing leopard kills could help him survive the hard times. It's June in South Africa, a special date for the Pride. The white cubs are two years old and almost fully grown. They have survived all the perils and all the challenges of growing up wild. They also have a new home range far away from the nomads. A place called Klesiri. It's rich in game. <laughs> they took down a buffalo in the night. But once again, hyenas are onto them. A brave white cub is ready to take them on. One hyena she can handle. But a whole clan is a different kind of challenge. She moves to confront them with a confident swagger. Just like her mother. No longer a cub. Right from the start, she takes charge, intimidating the hyenas. She scuffs the ground, claiming ownership of this territory, just as her mother once showed her. 
She is so confident, she lays down. The hyenas mistake this for weakness and move forward. They come at her from all sides. Thirteen hyenas. She lets them come. And then, it's her turn. The hyenas know they will not get past this lion. At sundown, the hyenas are suddenly spooked and flee. It's a large male, and he's heading for the pride. Matimba moves to defend her family. This male is new. He's not one of the nomads. He calls a greeting, not a threat. Matimba keeps up the aggressive defense and moves forward to intimidate him. But he doesn't want to fight. A white youngster, who's pretty intimidating herself, is there to support her mother. Now the whole pride moves up to join with Matimba. The hyenas help themselves to the unguarded carcass. Time to get back to their meal before the hyenas devour it all. Matimba seems to know this male is not like the others. So she returns to her pride and allows the male to follow her. The family is still on high alert. But he isn't here to attack them. He's here to woo them. But first, he will sample the fruits of their hunting. It will take some time before he wins their trust. But the family now has a big adult male to help defend them. By the time Summer returns to Kruger, the new male has secured his place with the White Pride. Kanya is the first lioness to mate. A new chapter is now beginning for the White Pride. Matimba and Kanya's new cubs will be arriving soon. The tawny cousin will set out on his own. And the White Sisters have a whole new life ahead of them. They are the first White Lions to reach maturity in the wild in more than two decades. Their success so far has been remarkable. They began as scruffy little cubs and grew into fine young lionesses. For the past two years, they struggled to survive Kruger's fierce wilderness and the challenges of their white coats. 
But they've had two amazing lionesses looking out for them. Teaching them everything they know. Their future will soon depend on their own abilities, their own teamwork, and their own wisdom. Will they be strong hunters raising their own cubs in the years to come? The story of Kruger's White Lions is just beginning. <laughs>